Big stuff. I mean, big stuff, right. I agree yeah. with that. Good evening and welcome to the January 27th meeting of the Hampton Board of Selectmen. Please stand for the salute to the flag. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to introduce the board. To my far left, Selectman Mike Pierce. To my immediate left, Selectman Phil Bean. To my far right, Selectman Mike Pluff. To his left, Selectman Mary Louise Woolsey. My immediate right, Town Manager Fred Welch, I'm Chairman Dick Nichols. The uh, first item on the agenda tonight is a public hearing, hearing pursuant to RSA 31,95B. <coughs> Under the provisions of RSA 31,95B, uh, Roman numeral 3A, to apply for a $475,000 2013 Hurricane Sandy Coastal Resiliency Competitive Grant for the purpose of decommissioning the Old Mill Pond Dam, also known as the Grist Mill Pond and <coughs> dam and replacement of the high street culverts and perform a drainage study of Meadow Pond. Keith, do you want to speak to this? Sure. Uh, thank you. Good evening. Uh, this is a continuation of um, a number of discussions I've had with the board about applying for a federal grant to help subsidize the cost of, um, of the work that you just mentioned. Um, and so I actually had, we had a public hearing about a month and a half ago for a certain amount. Uh, but then we decided to add the study of the Meadow Pond area. So I've asked for a second uh, uh, public hearing in order to increase the amount of the grant amount. Mm -hmm. uh, so following a meeting that I had today with the state officials, the grant application is actually due on this Friday. So I had a teleconference with a number of state officials today, and they've reviewed all my paperwork, and they've recommended that uh, we increase the grant amount to $500,000. It does not change the town's appropriation at all. Good. It's just the accounting for the $25,000 of in-kind services that DES is giving and also the um, County Conservation District. So it's just a paper uh, work uh, type of thing. It's nothing substance as far as cost of the town. Our cost is still looking good at $135,000 if we get the grant for a $535,000 project. So, so the, I think it's more in Article 16 for the decommissioning of the mill will, rain, will still remain a $400,000 <coughs> appropriation and the subsequent one will still remain a $235,000. Right. Dollar simply the the application for the grant will right. increase to 500. And so what I'm looking for again is the board to authorize me because I have to um, sign the agreement uh, the grant application for Friday. Yep. Just to submit the grant for $500,000. I'll okay. move to so authorize the public work. Let's um, give, oh. give the public a chance. Well, Would anybody from the public uh, wish to comment? Well, that's rely. This applies. Mary to Louise. Yeah. Would anybody from the public wish to comment? Okay, seeing none. Mary Louise? I was going to say, this just focuses on the, um, the amount of the grant, mm -hmm. not whether or not right. we want to do it. And I also move that we authorize Keith to sign for the 500000 Do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Selectman <coughs> Pierce. Any further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Recognition of service. Roger Cyphers, Park and Recreation Department. Roger? Come on, Roger. Come on, Roger. Come on, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'm, uh, I'm embarrassed and on at the same time, if you can understand what I mean by that, you know. Okay. Uh, Whereas, <laughs> Roger Cyphers has served the town of Hampton with dedication and loyalty as an employee of the Hampton Recreation and Parks Department for over 40 years and whereas he has served with distinction, providing guidance and leadership during his tenure as a faithful employee, and whereas he has served the town of Hampton beyond the call of duty on many occasions, often at personal sacrifice. Be it resolved that the selectmen and the citizens of the town of Hampton make known their appreciation for the service Roger Cyphus has rendered to the town of Hampton, whereunto we have set our hands and seal this 27th day of January and the year of our Lord 2014 and the 376th year of the incorporation of the town of Hampton and the 334th year of the founding of New Hampshire and the 238th year of the independence of the United States of America. Thank you, Roger. Thank you so much. Uh, do I have a second to speak about sure. something? Sure. Yep. Why don't you um, it's step to the microphone okay. so yeah. people at home can hear. It's, uh, 
you know, when I, when I uh, first moved into the town of Hampton, which was like, you know, 1959, uh, and uh, I always played sports, and basketball was a thing you could play later on. There's no time to play football, but basketball was, you know, a great sport, always had been, always will be. So I wanted to play, and uh, so I come down here to the town hall. It wasn't this town, it was the old town hall. So I go inside, and um, in case you're interested in how this goes, and I'm looking for the rec department. And the rec department was there in the, off the hallway, about the size of maybe an oversized closet. And I go in there, and I, I asked them about playing basketball and how it was set up. And, and, and the man looked up, a young guy from uh, UNH was, uh, I don't know, working his degree or something from UNH. And um, I remember right, it was... Sue Maloney could have been there at the same time, or right Marshall. after that. Oh, okay, yeah. and uh, so I, uh, I talked to him and all. I said, you know, and they said, well, geez, you like to do that? Well, we'll work on it. We'll leave your number and everything like that. So I did that. Before you know it, they get a number of people, guys from the, the town, get on for the, uh, the men's adult basketball. Mm -hmm. And so we started at that particular point, and they got some basketballs. We started playing it. The, um, the junior high you know, academy, and then later on, a number of years ago, we switched down to the mass, and, which is really nice, always will be. And um, so um, I thought I'd kind of run that by you so people understand how, you know, the men's basketball started, and as I retired about a year or so ago, and, and um, uh, after so many years, it was kind of difficult, but I, it was just time, you know what I mean? And so... Um, I went to see and, and told uh, Dinah Martin about it, and she was so happy that, for me and everything. <coughs> Sad to see me go at the same time, I believe. And uh, <laughs> yes, there's three um, guys that have always played with down here. Yeah. And yeah. And yeah. And yeah. And yeah. Recognize these guys, and they put up with me for so long. And uh, we had a f probably a few words once in a while, but they really respected everything I tried to do. And it, uh, I got so I got to know so many so many guys around. And the basketball, and with the stores I go, they always wave to me, hey Roger, how's it going, you know, things of that nature. And so it was a, it was a real blast. And once again, I really didn't expect anything this, like this, but I'm, I'm happy and I'm, I'm proud that uh, all the work I put in, I finally get a little something I'm going to put up on my wall, you know. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> anybody comes in, I'm going to point it to them, you know. And uh, so uh, that's... Um, I think I'm running out of words now, <laughs> so <laughs> it's probably time to cease and so. I have one more thing. Can I talk about for one second <coughs> about the Heritage Commission? Because I'm a member of the Heritage Commission. I've been over 25 years, and I have um, I've been in charge of the um, the blacksmith shop. I'm not going to say this word correctly, but the, the Cooper House of Building. I can't. Uh, no, Art Moody knows the name of it. Anyhow, it's an old building that's next to the um, the blacksmith shop. And, and it was put there, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 years ago when Vic LaSalle came down with Ansel Palmer and all the trailer we put it there. It came from the, I think, the Wayside Farm, way back mm -hmm. down there. Yeah. I think they used yeah. to make barrels, right, Mike? Uh, yeah. Way back. And it had a lot of history to it. But so when did they get it down there in one piece because it was difficult even to put it in place. So what I'm trying to get around to is that uh, it's really in disarray and it's a liability to the town. It's falling apart. So I had a chance to say something up here to yeah. <laughs> talk about the Heritage Commission. So, and the, the windows are all broken up, so I put plywood on it and everything like that. And I'm afraid uh, someone's going to get hurt in there. Well, even if you can get through the door and you can walk in, you'll have to fall right straight through because the, the flooring is, is not good. And I, I was hoping that the town could, you know, some way or another uh, uh, do away with it, uh, even though it uh, has a lot of history, because w sometimes when things get old and they get dangerous, I think it's time. And maybe uh, you could probably look into that with the Department of Public Works, or maybe the, the firemen will help you out, do something to get, get rid of it. There could be more space there, and um, less liability the town has to uh, worry about. I guess I've done my time here. <laughs> so Thanks very much, Roger. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. Okay, next item on the agenda, the award of holiday lighting contest winners. Diana? <laughs>
we have to take a look at that. We will. I probably will take a look at the building inspector. Yeah. Thank you. Roger, do you want the box? Do you want to hang it on the wall? You don't want the box. That's cute. Right. Once you guys do some real business. <laughs> 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 Okay, so each year the Hampton Recreation Department provides a number of programs for the holiday season and the two that tie together tonight are the Tour of Lights and the Holiday Light Spectacular Contest. So each season we take people out on rides um, in the town bus to see the spectacular lights and decorations that have been put up by the residents in town and we call this the Tour of Lights. <laughs> While on the tour we point out the ones that have been entered into the Holiday Light Spectacular Contest and on the final night of the rides the Recreation Advisory Council joins in and judges those um, entered into the contest. We have two <coughs> categories of business and residential and from there they choose the best of the best. I also want to thank John Carden tonight um, of Carden Photography because he joined us this year. He's come on other years but this year he came out on his own um, and took the photos of all of the things so that we could judge them after and those are the photos that you see in all of the plaques. So this year we have five winners and for the residential we have Tom and Rose McNamara with the best traditional decorations. I don't think they're here to receive their plaque but their home is on Mill Road and it's, it's um, very traditionally decorated. It has beautiful wreaths of ribbons and lights. It looks pretty every single year. Um, and also for the residential we have Bill Payne who couldn't be here tonight but his wife is here to um, collect his and he had the best nautical theme and if you know um, this one you'll know instantly his was the tree that was made out of the lobster traps <laughs> out on when it kind of rode and this um, tree has doubled in size this year. <laughs> you want to come up and get yours and I don't know if they can see this on TV. Oh but isn't that neat. But that came out <coughs> beautiful. It did. Beautiful. And they had a um, tree lighting ceremony at <laughs> the beginning. <laughs> Good. Did an awesome job with Thank that. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, <laughs> for the businesses, we have the 401 Tavern, and they had the Best Community Spirit Award this year. Um, not only was the tavern all lit up, but the three houses around it, mm. Desi went out and made sure everybody lit up their houses and businesses around him, too. So we have Wesley Dolman here because tonight is Desi's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Let's, let's see. Show off. Oh, that's Ooh. beautiful. Desi asked me if I could just say a few words to say thank you. <laughs> he says thank you very much for um, renting this to the Formula One Tavern again. He's thrilled and he has been whisked away by his bride and friends on a moving holiday birthday celebration. So other than that, he would certainly be here. <laughs> so thank you very That's much. Great. <laughs> you know I get a spot for that up at the <laughs> Moreland <laughs> Tavern for <laughs> that block too. He showed yeah. it to me today. Um, and then we also have with us here tonight um, Tracy Dewhurst from the Victoria Inn. She was the winner and she had the best new design and if you saw the Victoria Inn today it was beautiful. It was right out of a coat uh, a postcard. It was lit up in all white lights and it was just beautiful to look at. No wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> I think that one too. This is, this is the oh, wow. Victoria Ooh. in this year. It was really fantastic. Spectacular to look at. Thank you. Great job, Thanks Tracy. Thank you very much. <laughs> and last but not least, we have um, Wally's Pub and they had the best holiday cheer. Uh, the pub was decorated. They had many Christmas trees outside the front of the pub. But then if you just look through the windows of the pub, you could see that someone had um, drawn these really colorful um, holiday Christmas themes on all the windows inside, all the mirrors and stuff. And they also had some blow-up things that were out on the <coughs> dance floor. I mean, he really did a nice job. So I guess he's not here tonight either. But. Those are the ones, so please congratulate these winners and start thinking about your designs for next year. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't rush it. This is great. <laughs> okay, public comment period. Would anybody from the public wish to comment? Arthur? He'll be up. <laughs> <laughs> Art Modi. <coughs> doing a little project.
practice for Saturday. <coughs> All these awards and trophies. I'm going to give one. I just made uh, that decision on the spur of the moment. I don't know what I'm going to call it. The art trophy. The art move trophy. I don't know. To Selectman Phil Bean for his relentless <coughs> exposure of various aspects of state government and its parasitic nature vis-a-vis -vis Hampton. Did you say that? No. no. <laughs> <coughs> it, especially in the revenue side. Not a bad term. And right. the fact that the both both liquor stores built at different times were opposed by boards of selectmen mm. at that time. <coughs> and uh, let's see, we had the we had the Gold, Golden Globes, the Grammys last night. The movie Oscars are coming up, so this is the I think I'm going to call it the Hampton Don Quixote. Award and trophy. <laughs> Tilting at windmills. Verbal, <laughs> it's a verbal trophy. <laughs> Thank you, Arthur. <laughs> Anybody else from the public? <coughs> Seeing none. Announcements and community calendar. Mike. I have nothing. Thank you. Nope. Nothing, sir. Mike. Well, I think Saturday's a big day. Deliberative session. Big day. Hopefully not long day. <laughs> well, <laughs> could be, but we hope people come out participate. And what time does that start, Fred? 8.30, 8 30, sir. 8 30. 8 30. Okay. At the high school. Yep. Mary Louise? Yes, I'm, I guess I'm thinking in the same terms as Mike. This is the one chance during the year when you can have a direct influence on what's going to go on that warrant that you fought so hard to be able to vote on. Uh, it's critical that the public show up. Uh, even if you can't spend a whole day, try to spend the morning when the big ticket items are up. And we really need to see people in attendance instead of the same old faces of the same old people who are there every year. Please try to come out of your house for just even just the morning <coughs> and share uh, some of the meeting with us. Okay. Um, I just want to use this opportunity to again make people aware of our non-emergency notification systems. Mm -hmm. um, they've really come into play the last several weeks mm -hmm. with DPW between some of the, the snow emergencies, parking bans, delays on trash because of holidays, delays on trash because of the weather, and so on. And I asked Paul um, a couple of days ago just for an update of the number of people that were signed up. And boy, was I impressed with what has taken place with uh, the email sign up. Oh, on, on December 14th, there were 89 people signed up for the broadcast email. By January 10th, there were 201 and by January 26th there were 293. So it's literally a, nearly 100 people, 50 percent increase in a space of two or mm -hmm. uh, three weeks. And I'd just like to thank Paul because when we brought this up, um, oh God, it was probably <coughs> four, five, six months ago or so, um, Paul, you know, could have made a thousand excuses about being busy or whatever, but he just went out and got it done <coughs> as far as the voicemail and adding the, the email right. capability. And there are now a thousand, over a thousand people receiving um, the emergency notifications from one um, medium or the other, whether it's voice, Facebook, Good. or emails. Okay, appointments. First appointment is Diana Martin, Director of Parks and Recreation, Departmental Update. Good evening again. <laughs> um, we have uh, four parts of our department, so I'll start with the parks maintenance. Um, our staff doesn't really start until the beginning of April, but we do have one um, sort of parks foreman that's come in two or three times this year just to clean the buildings and make sure everything's all squared away in front of the Tuck building for people to use that building. Uh, we took our Christmas tree down last week on the gazebo, and, we'll, and we took down the snowflakes today. We've been working with a company that won the bid for the garage on Tuck Field and the details of the project and they've attempted to start but they've been sidelined with some weather and a few other issues right now. In the parking lots we're in the process of seeing who will be coming back this summer to work and finding out how many we will need to hire for the season. Uh, we'll probably do our training in later part of May 
to officially start up that season. For recreation programs, we finished out our holiday season with the tour lights and the Magic of Christmas Symphony trip to Portland, and we had a holiday light spectacular contest. We have set up a number of summer programs and camps that will be on the website soon and in our spring and summer brochure. These include tuck field, summer day camp, cricket, safari camp, surf lessons, archery lessons, challenger soccer camp, creative kids art, field hockey camp, Hershey track and field, Lego robotics, theater camp, Red Cross babysitting, basketball camp with Donnie Seals of the Harlem Wizards, um, flag football camp, challenger British sports camp, tennis lessons, uh, camp a lot of fun, and cheer camp. That's what we've got set up so far. We're in the process of scheduling fields for the upcoming softball and baseball season. I know that's hard to believe for January, but it's already started. The K to do sports programs <coughs> in its third se session of five sessions right now, so they're doing the pillow polo. We're in the process of setting up for our trainings for camp staff and for lifeguards. We'll be having our Easter egg dig down at the beach on April 12th at 11 a.m. for children 12 and under. We're looking for volunteers to help the Easter Bunny bury eggs that morning. So if anyone's interested, please call our office. It actually is a lot of fun, especially if the, the it's really sunny and nice and that morning. The fishing derby this year will be held on May 10th from 8 to 11 for grades K through 8. And the derby is free, but children need to come to our office to pick up their fishing license. We've continued our Zumba as well as fitness offerings including the Power Hour, Strength Circuit, Total Body 10 Minutes, and Gentle Yoga and All Levels Yoga. And we're taking registration for a number of trips that we have set up including Cape Cod and Nantucket on June 2 through 4, Freeport Shopping on May 14th, Foxwoods Casino on April 16th. <coughs> we set up a trip to North Conway to shop the outlets and check out the beautiful scenery of the White Mountains on May 7th. The local league, which is our high school basketball, rec basketball league, has started and runs through March 15th. We have two trips going to the Boston Flower Show this year. That's going to be March 13th and 14th. Unfortunately, both of those trips are full at this point. The classes we've been running right now are art class with Mrs. A, yoga for kids, men's basketball, co-rec softball, and um, bone builders. We've set up <coughs> trips to North Shore Music Hall and for shows including Anything Goes, Greece, and Chicago, and there'll be more details on that <coughs> coming up soon. We also set up some theater trips to the Agunquit Playhouse, and these include Mary Poppins, Billy Elliot, and the Witches of Eastwick, and there'll be more details on that too. We set up a trip to the Red Sox at Yankee Stadium on June 28th. The tickets are $129 and $149 depending on the seats. This trip includes tailgating, food, bus, and admission to the game. And we also ordered Red Sox tickets today for Fenway Park. Um, and I think the tickets are against the Tampa Bay Rays, but I don't have the, the date on that. We set up a luncheon trip for the seniors for DeMillo's Floating Restaurant in Portland, Maine for March 12th. And we only have four seats left for that trip. It's $30. That includes your bus ride and the luncheon. And we're in the process of setting up the annual five annual I'm Trying 5K Road Race for a date in June. The race is to honor the longtime resident and longtime member of our Rec Advisory Council, Dara Shannon. She passed away about three years ago from cancer, so the majority of the proceeds will go to Dana-Farber, and the other portion will go to the Rec Department to offset the cost of the race. Um, lifeguards, we're sending out advertisements for lifeguards for the summer in the next couple of weeks. And that is all right now for January. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anybody have any questions for Diana? Did we have a, I guess I could ask one. How are we going to do on a life board for guards compared to last year? Have any feelings? I honestly don't know. I think I have two, possibly three, that may return. <coughs> Not sure about the other three. We'll see what happens. And how many do we actually need? We do use five. We, we had one last year that couldn't work on Thursdays, though, so we had an extra one working those shifts toward the end of the summer. <coughs> so I oh, no, sir. Anybody? Yep. Okay. Thank you very much, Diana. Okay. I also have this to pass out from Mike. Did you get um, the information I asked on the record? I asked about the recreation infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, do, yeah. do you want Mike oh, to cover it? Mike, Thank you. Mike yeah. did it for us, so we want him to cover it. Yeah. yeah. Here's a yeah. Okay. That's fine. Right. Well, uh, do you have time to look at that email? I did. 
Huh? I don't know if it's something we can use or not. I'm not sure. But the either. price is really good if it's something we can use. <laughs> the only problem is um, you said talked about Parsons Electric and they don't have a bucket truck, so they so couldn't actually put them out. Oh, we could oh. find somebody else. Well, they installed them. Oh, up there. Mike uh, up there. Can go over this. Yeah. Now, whether they can do it down here or not, I don't know. Right, they don't have a bucket truck. To do oh, okay. Thank you, Diana. Yep, thank you. Next appointment, Mike Smoltzer, Finance Director, Monthly Financials, End of Year Financials. Good evening. <coughs> um, on January 18th, at least that's when it was dated, I sent out the December 13th income uh, um, expense statements. And I'm calling it second pass. It's not quite final yet, but we're getting a lot closer. Um, this is December, it's the 12th month of the year, and so the target, of course, is 100%. Notable items, motor vehicle income for the year came in at $2.77 million, which is $210,000 above budget, 8.2% above target, and 126000 ahead of last year. Other major contributors to the income total, and this is for the year of $7.57 million, was land use change at 179, interest on taxes at 396, building permits 223, state of New Hampshire 1.1 million, departmental income 600,000, parking lots really good year at 463, rental of town property at 461, we had insurance reimbursements of 476 thousand dollars, and real estate trust at 615. The expense summary. Uh, shows the year-to-date expenses by the department. At the end of December, the operating departments with open POs but without debt was 99.13% of budget, mm. which is 0.87% below the target. <coughs> Not bad. This is shown on the year-end year savings report as $195,000. Uh, the comparative number to 2013 was 137. It should be noted that the operating costs include $69,000 worth of grant expenditures, which could be added to the budget, thereby increasing the estimated under-expenditure report. Uh, majority of the departments finished below target. As discussed previously, the Public Works Department would have uh, different departments being over and under budget with the best estimate that the overall department would remain positive. However, the current report shows that this did not happen and DPW was overexpended by $28,000. In light of this, I would suggest <coughs> a post approval by your board be considered. I'm continuing to uh, refine the financial statements. Um, we have the audit field work starting the week of February 10th. We actually have a couple auditors in today mm -hmm. and tomorrow for preliminary information. Um, I also have a secondary analysis showing the major items being encumbered, and that was sent out earlier, and I'm going to discuss that next. So I can go over any questions for well, this. Let me get questions on the um, year-end statement first. Anybody have any questions on the year-end financial statement, December financial statement? Uh, well, I don't know if it's directly related or not, but I was looking at the comment on page one of two uh, about the... Um, 28,000, is that what you're driving at or you want to move to something else? Is there a question in there, Mike? Or? Well, there is. Is that what you want to cover or you want to cover something else? I didn't quite understand no, what, what you were what saying. What Mike okay, was talking about as the next item is different than that. I would say if we're going to cover that, we should cover that now. What I, what I can do is I can give you, uh, when I looked at Public Works, and this goes back to November, mm -hmm. um, I looked at what they had done so far during the year. Mm -hmm. And they had, mm -hmm. at that time in November, uh, spent four million six hundred and forty-six thousand dollars against the budget of five million two hundred six. I know I'm using large numbers quickly, mm -hmm. but basically, um, that meant that to stay under budget, they could spend five hundred thirty-two thousand dollars. That would be the max. Mm -hmm. I estimated at that time mm -hmm. that they would spend five hundred and five. So that's so. The 532 and the 505, that's basically why I said they'd be $25,000 under budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. What happened was they came through and they spent $5,179,000. Um, let's see. No, I'm sorry. They spent $560,000, 491 in expenses, and then um, P 
POs went up by 68, and that compared to what I thought uh, would happen of 380. So they spent $100,000 more than I expected. Now I looked at the payroll. We actually had 53 weeks of payroll. The payroll was worth $38,000 all by itself. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, it's in the budget, but it was not. I did not factor that in when I did my estimate. Yeah. So your your payroll estimates were based on a 52-week. Right. I was looking. I was looking to prior months, and there's been only four weeks in you know four weeks in a month. This one had the fifth, the fifth week, the 53rd week, and that alone is worth $38,000. So I would say that I'm a I'm really basically saying that my estimate was low and they came through with the costs. Um, but when you think about $27,000 over on a $5 million budget, mm -hmm. yeah, you're talking a minuscule percentage. Yeah. So I'm asking, as we did with other departments that went over the budget, that you then say that all right, we understand we'll quote unquote make transfers or at least allow the overage for the public works. We have other departments that are under fire, police. We, we still stayed in a totally positive fashion. It's just that public works just went the other way. And my comment is this, that looking at November ending balance, and here in front of me, we were the uh, target was 91.7 percent for the end of November and at that point in time they were 87.81 according to this report I have here in my hand. And that means that we were 4 percent under target and then over here when I look at this one for the ending of 31 my problem is we have a target by the month of 100 percent which is good but it says down here percent used at the bottom 97.30 so what we're saying there is what we've spent is okay but it's the open purchase orders that drives us over correct right. okay now my question is if when the I guess I can only parallel to one little thing when I write a check <coughs> on my bank account and it goes through zero uh, my bank gets unhappy about that, and they charged me some outrageous fee. Years ago, they used to bounce a check. And my question is, how can we go through zero and not be acutely aware of that? Like I said, we're dealing with we're dealing with a, a total budget of over five million dollars, and. We came through at twenty-seven thousand dollars over. Overall, as I predicted, the total the total departments stayed under, and were better than we were last year. Well, yeah, we, we can't go with the bottom line for the whole town, or we'd be in serious <coughs> trouble with everybody. But I, I'm I'm confused about this because this is the whole department, and I don't see how we missed that, especially being this is the twenty-seventh of January. And they apparently went through zero close to the December 31st time frame. And I know it takes a while for all these things to come together in your office. I'm not complaining about that. But you wrote this together. You put this together on the 18th. That was 10 days ago. And I would think that um, after what we've been through the last year or so, I would think that, uh, that this should have been brought to our attention before we went through zero. In November, or actually in December, when I met with you, mm -hmm. I said I was yeah. forecasting this, literally this department, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I said that I felt at that time mm -hmm. that probably would be positive or under budget by twenty-five thousand dollars. I got that part. The whole change that we're talking about right now mm -hmm. is fifty thousand dollars on five million. <coughs> well, I understand that part too. The ratio, you know, like doesn't make right. it sound like much money, but I mean. I'm, I'm just, I, I can't uh, seem to, uh, I, I just uh, not happy about this at all. That's all I can say about it. I, I'm all done with my questions. Any other questions? Mayor Louise? Yeah, not so much a question. I don't want to, to ever see us transfer money from another account. I want to see the lines that run under 
run mm -hmm. under, so I know what's happening, and I've said this for years in the Budget Committee. But I will say, in a sense, that this is chickens coming home to roost, and I have no problem with the way this has been presented, Mike. But for years, the Public Works budget was dug into and dug into and dug into to finance the other departments, and now it's about time Public Works is starting to get on track. And I don't think this is unusual or a problem, and I'm glad to see spending in Public Works. So there. Um. Phil, any uh, I would just say uh, thank you, Director, and uh, I did have a chance to uh, just pop in uh, on my way to see the town manager today, the auditors, and uh, uh, from, uh, from their mouths, uh, a, a complete respect for how well this town is run, for how well our accounting uh, is, is, uh, is executed, and uh, how well we perform at audit, and they, uh, they're really uh, looking under the hood, as they should. It's a great accounting firm, but these were... Uh, uh, young men and uh, they're uh, Cracker Jacks and they had a lot of uh, very, very solid, nice things to say about how this town is run. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of comments. Sure. To, to this one that's been discussed, a couple of observations I made. Um, we spent about $17,000 in snow removal related overtime mm -hmm. um, during right. December and we spent $22,000 in salt in December. So I, I honestly don't recall. We must have had a couple of decent storms in yes. December yes. at this point. I, I don't we remember did. the yeah. dates yeah. And, and whatever. So I think that was part of it. Another observation I made, Mike, and um, I if you can't answer that. That's fine. I would have hit you with it early, but I didn't pick it up in the afternoon. I noticed there's 86,000 in engineering POs, which is quite a bit more money than what had been on the encumbrance list. I don't know if you want to address that when we get to the list or whatever. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Um, I have a couple. I, I tend to agree with, with Mike, though, and, and from a technicality standpoint, if, if the selectmen have to approve a MS-7 level line mm -hmm. going over, it, they should be approving it before it goes over, not after it goes over. Otherwise, it's like a building permit or a site plan, you know, as built, you know, um, you know, approval. A couple of other comments I made. Um, one thing I thought was interesting, even after backing out the 476000 for the LGC refunds, revenues were still a million dollars over the forecast, even without that LGC money, and it was a variety mm -hmm. of, of areas. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Question, Mike. Um, Conservation Commission, the budget and the, the actual were both exactly 30000 $803. Is this something where residual gets moved into another fund with them? Absolutely. Uh, conservation, the library, right. and heritage, all three are covered under our RSAs, and we are, we have to pay 100% right. of the budget. So yeah. those three you'll see are going to be perfect at 100%. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I knew about the library, but I didn't Good. know yeah. about, um, <clears throat> so w with all the discussion of conservation, conservation actually did come in under budget, and then some residual yeah. moved yes. into the fund. Okay. <clears throat> Um, just to your um, third bullet down about the year-end savings of being 195,000, but <coughs> the reality is it's reasonable to to add the 69,000 in grants mm -hmm. to that. You correct me if I'm wrong, but in addition to that, that's 195 plus 6,964 or whatever. We also took 140 or so thousand and moved that into the compensated absence fund, mm -hmm. so that was not actually right. spent. Right, that's right. available. For, for future, so th mm -hmm. the reality is 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 that it's um, the unspent is 195 plus 69, 142. Does that sound right? I think it is. Yeah, so it, actually a little over 400 thousand um, dollars was was unspent. Last year we moved some comparable number to the reserve also, so it, yeah. it does make a good comparison. Building up. Yep. Um, question for you. Um, I noticed on, on the EMS revenues, it's, it's down quite a bit from last year. It's down about 46,000 or about 8%. Is this number in this version of the report the final number for no. you? No. Okay. So this is 11 months. Month okay. Ahead. I'm waiting for the 12. Yep. Okay. Um, just a, a comment. The legal department, you remember back to 2009, 2010, all kinds of shots and how much money we're spending on legal and let's get rid of the legal department and so on. The legal department came in $29,000 under budget. Total amount spent both inside and outside council was 210000 That's down from 368000 in 2009 and I actually backed out of that 
2009, there was 119,000 that was damages and judgments yeah, and whatever. So we've actually gone from 368 um, down to 210. It's been a little bit each year, although this year is about the same as last year. And they came in under budget by 29,000. Also mentioned that um, assessing came in 40,000 under budget. We had um, quite a bit of money in there for, for um, expert witnesses and stuff, a lot of which relates to some of our commercial and utility um, litigation that we're, we're, we're looking at. I think to some extent this was a deferral, but, um, you know, um, assessing did a good job in mm -hmm. terms of coming into budget as well. Um, those are my question. comments. Mike, did you, you wanted a motion then in Could terms of approving um, I'm not sure exactly how you want this worded related to the DPW um, 28,000. I'd have, to, I'd have to go. Fred, would you be able to help with that one? I think the motion should uh, authorize the uh, Department of Public Works to always spend their budget for the, 20, the $27,000 mm -hmm. exact also amount. I think that's what the it is. The closing figure. Echoed, yeah, yeah. We also echoed with the last one. I'll, I'd like to ask another question before we get down to okay, that. Okay, I'll second. Mike, you have a question? Yes, I do. Uh, on page um, um, that has the final year end savings, which is in between a page. It's after, 16 six, it's after 16 of 16, yes. I am one of 16. Oh. Um, we have purchase orders, okay, uh, at the end of the year. And I'm wondering how many of those are public works, roughly, ballpark? I think we can get that right off this report, can't we, Mike? Yep. Yeah. It's totaled on page, um, page 12 of 16. I believe it's 167,860. Is that correct? Am I pulling it from the right location, Mike? Yes. And which line is that, uh, Mr. Uh, the, the bottom line on page 12 of 16 uh -huh. on the column open 2013 POs. That should be total public works if mm -hmm. I'm. Oh, okay. Sure. Okay. 167,000. Now, the question I have then uh, along that line is being they've got the lion's share of that, is how much of that? <coughs> 167,860 was on that 120 some thousand that we approved for end of the year spending. But well, those would be outstanding purchase orders, I'm sure, because right. they didn't rush right out and buy them. Correct. Do you have any idea how much of that late? Because that was 100 and my memory serves me correctly without looking at the sheet. It was somewhere around 145,000 they asked for, 125,000, and was they were willing to get by with 45,000, and the, this board decided to go with the higher number. The original request was 125584 yeah. That's what they asked for. And, and that was, see, but you already had open POs, so that was an additional amount. That would be an additional amount that right. we we're going to add, so that would drive it overall by itself. Mm -hmm. So when I voted against that, I was being very smart, mm -hmm. not knowing this was going to happen. <laughs> and the rest of the board were overspending that account by yourselves. Thank you. Anyway, I just want to point that out to the public. It's not all Mike. We helped it a little bit on this board. When we take the end of the year spending and drive it to zero, it's not smart. And I'll let it go at that. I would, I, I understand Mike's point and I agree with it to some extent, but I would also point out on a bottom line basis, we didn't drive it to zero. There was actually $400,000, right. mm -hmm. a little bit over and above that that was actually unspent. Mm -hmm. Additionally, I want to also mention that we had um, a warrant article that did not pass DRA's muster, so basically we had to move fifty thousand dollars. Exeter Road. Yeah, right. we had to bring that back into the into there, and a lot of it's sitting, literally right now in the open POs. I've got it listed at fifty-four thousand dollars. So that alone should have been taken care of by a warrant article. That alone would have put it back to the twenty-five thousand dollar under. Let me ask you a question in your uh, software that you use to run tabs on. Mike Pierce's spending account. Does it tell you when I've been overdrawn? Automatically <coughs> raise a flag or something when some account, major account, goes past zero? It's only when I get to the point where I've I've put out this kind of information. So the answer is no. So basically, you have to build it so you can figure out what it is. Right. That's correct. I got you. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. I really appreciate all your effort on this, really. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Unanimous. Right. Okay. I think we're ready to move to. The second item, Mike, you wanted to go over is um, the updated encumbrances. Yep. Um, I did put out a list on 124. Um, 
I think basically the, the biggest point is that the original list came out at 592. Uh, right now we're at 551, so there's a differential of $40,000. However, as uh, Mr. Nichols was asking about, the Exeter Road survey, that number was lower. It's currently at $54,000. There was an, a late PO issued, and I, I know you're going to question this one, but it's $34,800. It was covered for, it's for the Exeter Road survey. Mm. We had the contract. We had uh, the board's approval. Yeah. Right. It basically, we just missed the PO. Yeah. So that's why that line alone jumped $34,000 oh. between the two time frames. Okay. I'm, lo I'm looking at the two printouts, Mike, and I'm not, fo I'm not following where the 34 is. It's buried. In s it's inside of the Public, public Works Extra Road Survey. is now at 54000 Yeah. And 34.8 of that is <coughs> that last PO that I cut to um, CMA engineers. I'm looking at the 1230 version of this list. It was 51. I believe I've possibly, I don't have, I didn't bring that one with me tonight. I did not. So is the, the 34 back on the original? I don't think it's December the 30, 13th I don't think proposal. the 34 was in the original one. I'd have to go back and look. It's on page six that I'm looking at for the engineering numbers. At $86,000, what I've done is I've broken out uh, Lafayette Road away from. Um, Lafayette Road Engineering is 52, and Exeter Road Survey is 54. I've got a couple different things added together that's coming up with those. Uh, are you saying that, that maybe prior to this December 30th, that that was actually $34,000 less than? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any, uh, anything else you wanted to say in the list or any No. Basically, or? Um, this is going to be the the final number that I'm going to bring forward to the, the auditors Good. and that will dovetail into one more item that I would like to talk about. Um, okay, so I have a couple of questions on, on the list, whatever. Sure. One of which Mike already clarified. I had asked a question on the 1230 list. There was a, an amount for 51,040 for cold patch that wasn't on the original, but apparently that was a typo. Yeah, um, the top part, the top part of the analysis is what you voted on. So that originally was 592. It's now 551. Below the, that is just what I would highlighted items, and I had a typo. Right. It, it was, I put 51,000 for coal patch. It was 1,000. Right. So, so, so the closed. numbers on the bottom line are correct. The 51040 was actually $1,000. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, and looking at the new list, there were a couple of items that. Um, weren't on the original list, and um, uh, one of them I can't even figure the department. There's something called FR looks to be the department, and then it says replacement equipment, hydro ram cylinders. What, what is that? Would be fire department. Okay, because the, the other said FD. Fire rescue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, the no, other that's fire a typo. department. Said the fire department. department. And now that was not on any of the prior lists. It should have been. It depends on how <coughs> I, I accumulated it. I could have put together some numbers down here, I could have put things together for the fire department or not even put it on. Mm. This is okay. just my attempt to show you what some of the highlights are. So, so this could have been on, on the list before these items were added? Mm. Is that, cause no, it was what, like I'm saying, what I'm saying is, is that this, this, the bottom half of this is just, I went through the POs and said, oh, I should tell you that yeah. this is what these are, yeah. instead of just having a straight number. Yeah. Okay. And one other question on the list, there was the, the December 30th list had 43,000 for chemicals, and now that's gone. Does that, did, did we not closed. decide to do that, or did it we was, actually it was invoice? closed. Huh? It was closed, and we so bought the last chemicals, we closed the PO, mm -hmm. we scrubbed it out. Oh, yeah. So, okay. so we did not spend the 43,000 that had been We spent some amount of money, mm -hmm. but and not the closed entire, the PO. Yeah. Not the entire amount. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Mike. I have one more piece of information that I put <coughs> together, and it's to answer a question um, that Mr. Pierce has brought up. <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, yeah, I always ask At least I didn't it. ask you about the fire department <laughs> and, and, and the month behind tonight. I'm getting better. <laughs> okay, good. 
what I've done is I've taken the unaudited statements that we're dealing with ah, and right. now try to get an idea of what is happening to the fund balance. Good. Uh -huh. This is the calculation that I have to go through and it's pretty close. There's still one large out unknown and I'll get to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. But basically the fund balance is affected by income minus expense. Right. That's, yeah. that's the basis. We had in 2013, I'm calculating $27 million worth of income and we've gone through some of the the items but the general fund is definitely a, over a million dollars higher than I expected. That's what's driving this number and we went through it earlier when I talked about what what the pieces are. Mm -hmm. Then the departmental expenses came in at 25 million. <coughs> the difference is almost two million dollars more income than expense. Mm -hmm. From that you're going to take away any change in the encumbrance balance. And the encumbrance balance that I'm looking at is what's this year's balance compared to last year's. There's one big unknown, the change in contingencies. We have not calculated that number yet in regards to, and the contingencies deal with um, <coughs> lawsuits. Reserved fund balance. That's it. Yeah. Okay. That number could be significant. I don't know yet. We will be talking about that in the future. But the encumbrances are down by 166. No, it's the, it's the other way around. Okay. They're higher. Um, so the net change is 1.8 million right now without knowing what the contingencies are. You have the unassigned fund balance from last year at 4 million. So right now, the, I estimate 5.8 million dollars in the fund. The, the DRA suggested balance at 5 percent is 2.8. So right now you have $3 million, at least an estimated number of $3 million in excess in the fund balance. Right. So that 2811 would come be minus, the 5852 would be minus the 2811 that would give right. you your... Yeah. 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 Correct. Does the amount of money generated by taxes driven by the overlay, the 726000 automatically fall to the reserved fund balance? Or yes. Okay. So it would be what That's you're talking about of the unknowns of contingencies would be over and above right. the 725 of the right. What would what we did was we decided that <coughs> we wanted to the overlay normally is 250,000 because your abatements are, are roughly 250, so mm -hmm. the two wash off, yeah. so you don't have any tax effect. Yeah. But we knew that we probably were going to increase the contingencies this year, so that is one way mm -hmm. of putting money towards that. <coughs> So if, say, we decided contingencies wanted to go up by 500000 uh -huh. you've covered yourself in the overlay because you'd have 500000 to the contingent and 250 towards the abatements. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what the contingencies are. Right. Anybody have any other questions no? on that? Appreciate Mike, it. Mike, one other item. Mike, did you have a question? Oh, no, I didn't. Okay. I was just thinking. One other item, you, if, if you could cover it. Um, I had asked Fred. Um, to give us some information and update on the rec fund, the 20% park, and I understand you did the work yeah. on this, so why don't you cover it? The, the reason I asked that is I, as I went through the minutes, it had Fred saying there was 525000 in the fund. I didn't think he said that. No, I didn't. And, and, and <laughs> but I wanted to kind of... Um, huh? I think you said one. That, that, that's the yeah. way I remembered as well. Yeah. But either way, what, what I wanted to completely understand is how much was in at the end of 12, how much has already been approved? You wanted, you wanted the numbers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if you could just does Diana everybody have a copy of this? Diana should have yeah. passed that out yeah. to you. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she did. Earlier? Okay. Yeah. All right. At the end of 12, mm -hmm. in the infrastructure fund, which is number 30, you had $172,000. Yeah. And this is the one that's totally funded by the 20% of parking revenue. Correct. Right. Yeah. In 13, your 20% of parking revenue was $115,000, 116. You also expended $9,800 under Warren Article 1224. So that's <coughs> that money is now moved over to the general fund to pay for the expenditure of the $9,800. Warren Article yeah. number 24 from 2012, oh. which had to do with the construction of the garages and Correct. the sheds oh. and all okay. that. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and I believe that they basically were for the plans. It's, it's yeah. mostly architectural. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you had a net increase of 106000 
So at the end of 13, I'm estimating 277, it'll be fluctuate a little bit. This could be of some interest. But that's roughly where you're at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now I'm looking at 14. Transfer to the general fund, I'm saying $49,000 because that's what you already have in an encumbrance. That is the number that at least I know about mm -hmm. for the rec to finish up the work on Warren Article 12-24. Good. L let me ask you a question on that one. Yep. She had approval in that Warren Article of 78000 yep. We've only spent 9800 yep. of that. So in, in very rough terms, th there's the authorization based on that Warren Article to still spend $70,000. But what your 49 is is an actual bid. Yep. But conceivably, another 21 could be spent. The authorization is there. I don't <coughs> think so, because basically I've made this encumbrance in you have only brought forward that amount of money to the to right. the future. Yeah, I'm not sure that's the case. No. Cool. Yeah, possible. But anyway, I'm putting down what I know. You could yeah. potentially spend a little more, but I I think I'll just comment. Maybe Fred knows something I don't. But if you look at the difference between the 49.2 and the 78 minus 9,800, that's roughly a little under twenty thousand right. dollars. If you look at that yeah. Warren article, it was multi-purpose. Part of that had to do with, with the actual design and construction and all that of Building. the garage or sheds right. or whatever you want to call them. There was also language in there that allowed that to be used for design work of something that was different <coughs> yes, than, that's correct. than the, the sheds in the uh -huh. garage or whatever. Yeah. So my suggestion would be that we kind of view what's been allocated out of that fund as closer to the $70,000 number than the forty nine. Um, There's another 19,000. If you actually look yeah. on page 15 or 16, you'll see the calculation. Yeah. There's another 19,000 I'm not accounting for. She still has right. enough to cover. <coughs> so, oh, right, yeah. Okay. And, right. and then. Taking out the And then I'm estimating. Yeah. You okay on that one? Yes. Okay. Then I'm estimating another 20% saying I'm yep. going to have roughly the same amount in 13. So mm -hmm. I add 115,000. Yeah. And then. There's a proposed Warren article for ninety thousand dollars. That's yep. that's a Warren article fourteen dash twenty two. It's always a year and a Warren article number. Yep. So if that was to pass, then you'd have ninety thousand come out. So you'd have a net drop in fourteen from the fund of twenty four thousand dollars. So you'd end up with basically two hundred fifty thousand dollars at the end of fourteen. Mm -hmm. Right. She's got more than enough money right. to cover what she. Needs oh, yeah. to it, it looks to me as if, if we just for the sake of the discussion assume that nineteen thousand somehow gets spent. Okay. Yep. It it looks to me like <laughs> there's roughly even if the ninety thousand warrant article passes and we had no revenues, yeah, and, and I'm not saying yeah. that's going to happen, but we had no parking revenues yeah. in 2014, yeah, there would still be $30,000 in yeah, that yeah. fund. So we're not, one, one of the things that I personally didn't want to see us do is, is to put forward Warren articles in anticipation of revenue yeah. as opposed to money yeah, we have, and we right. haven't done that. It looks like there's $30,000 yeah. there. So yeah. I agree with that. On the, on the garage, just so you know, on the garage, uh, the vendor that was selected has already come for change order. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm working with the building inspector to examine that. We may void the bid. Yeah. Go out to bid again. Oh, mm -hmm. that's okay. So this might drag on for a while. It may drag on for a while, but I, I we haven't even started work on it yet, and already they want a change order. Uh, yeah, I, I have a problem with that. Yeah, yeah that's good. <laughs> a big problem. Yeah, that's good. Okay, anything else, Mike? Yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. I am Thank you, I am disillusioned, Mr. Chairman, because <coughs> I thought you kept track of the storms on your calculator too. I actually do have <laughs> I actually do have a MS Word journal which I could go to and look when the storms were. You had to I didn't get a fancy that. one with an app just for you. Had to. <laughs> <laughs> one was a doozy. Okay. Um, <laughs> next appointment, Ed Tinker, Chief Assessor. A couple of items, Ed. Um, just a couple of small items tonight. Yep. Um, the tax collector abatements. Um, we only have three, and it appears this year um, the number should be. This, this may be the only three, actually. Um, she did. Uh, Donna did uh, include a list of the three right. mm -hmm. reasons for them. One of them, of course, is an actual abatement, a refund, um, and that has to do with a, an error in the. Uh, reading of a veteran's credit as an exemption. 
uh, in the warrant, uh, which would uh, require a refund of 245.40 plus interest of 282. The other two um, bookkeeping reasons: uh, the lease land or the lease parking spaces for the town. Um, we do have bills in the spring, but the list comes out um, typically after the first tax bill. Um, this person didn't rent for the year, so we actually had a bill for the correct people. So this is just a, a correction that needs to be uh, taken off the books. I would make a motion to approve the three tax collector, collector abatements in a total amount of $245.40. I'll second. All in favor? Um, $245.40? Yeah. Okay. I, I'll uh, vote for that. All in favor. Unanimous. Okay, Ed, and you have another item related to the 2013 supplemental warrant? Right. We have a property that uh, had a conflicting map and lot number with another parcel. For some reason, this didn't get printed in the warrant. We fixed the map and lot number to avoid that next year. Um, however, a bill wasn't generated this year, and that's what this is for, uh, for $217.89. Okay. Somebody like to make a motion? I'll so move that we accept. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Okay. Thank you. you. Okay. Next appointment, Brian McCain, Channel 22, several items. Brian and Paul. for you to uh, see about getting some new equipment mm -hmm. to upgrade. Yep. Uh, it's basically replacement co uh, equipment. Uh, I don't know where you want to start on the agenda. I believe it has the switchers first. but Monitors and then cameras. Yeah. And then if if, if I understand it, Brian, um, one, two, and three um, are essentially all on yeah. this yes. one list with right. the 7,476. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if we need <laughs> to go through them individually. I, I just have one question sure. on it. Um, but my, my only question was, I, I understood, you know, the, the camcorders, and they were actually something you asked for when you, you actually produced three lists of things you were looking for back right. in November. One right. was, mm -hmm. looked like replacement equipment for the selectman's room. One had to do without fit, fitting Winnicunnet Road, and the other one had to mm -hmm. do this without... This is just for the right. selectman's room. Right, right, yeah. exactly. And the only, um, you know, question, I'm not, I don't have any questions on the small items, 150 bucks, but what is, th there's one item on this list that's called a Data Video DE600 switcher, um, $1,920. Yeah. It was not on that original selectman's list, well, but there was something else on that list that looked like it was from the same manufacturer. It, it was. It was the monitors. We were, we were uh, when we saw the list from the fire department, they had that on there along with a multi <coughs> multi-view view, uh, screen, okay? Mm -hmm. And what we found out, we went up to Access AV and, and looked at all this. And those six or those nine monitors, the data video monitors that I would originally ask for would be almost $3,000. Uh, Plus you'd need an another monitor I had, I had here. Another monitor uh, that would be 849 that you need along with that. Well, this other unit, this data video e, uh, DE600 switcher, and below that you'll see the monitors, the two monitors, yeah. that would replace everything, including a new switcher okay. Okay. that would be capable of, uh, of um, scan converting. S scan converting. Gotcha. And the difference between them would be yeah. if we went to the old, the, the original would be $3,800. This would be. 25. Okay, so it's it's and a much better system. You're you're solving the problem in a in a in a more efficient right. and right. more cost-effective right. way. But okay, um, I'm I'm fine with that. I, I would make a motion to I'll second approve sure. the um, yep. purchase of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items totaling seven thousand yep. four hundred and seventy-six dollars. Uh, seconded by Mary Louise. Yep. Any further discussion? Yeah. All in favor? I have a couple of questions as long as you're sure. sitting there, if I can. Um, back in November, there were, aside from the, the selectman replacement equipment, there were two um, lists of, of stuff for purchase. I've just held on to that since then. Mm -hmm. um, it totaled 23345 for the uptown station and uh, 16549 um, for the beach. Um, my, my question's going to be, 
what direction are we going to be taking in the future with that? Well, that's request. my next project. But, but, that's but I, I also want to add something to it before you answer my question. Okay. Um, I had a discussion with um, Chief Silver that I want to throw into the mix here and, and how it relates to our plans back um, a month or so ago when I just went on a tour of the fire station mm -hmm. with him. And one point um, Chris made is that apparently the, the uptown station is, is not set up from a security standpoint to have public meetings, okay? Uh, the, 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 mm -hmm. You know, the, the door locks and everything else. What he's essentially saying is, is you can't run public meetings in here, okay? Yeah. And so that raises the question, um, you know, what if, if we can't run public meetings, what do we really want to do? I'm not saying we do nothing in there, but what do we really want to do in the way of equipment for that particular room. Right, right. What, what, again, just based on the discussion with, with the chief, is what we, what we do have <coughs> a, a, a potential need or whatever, which may be different than, you know, $23,000 worth of equipment, is if we want to broadcast the EOC right. in that location. Yeah. That's right. obviously right. not a public yeah. meeting, right. and there may be right. a well, need. Yeah, I don't know if, if that necessarily means that we need all this equipment. I'll just leave it at okay. that. We don't, mm -hmm. use, but I just wanted yeah. to get that out there that that is an issue. The second thing the Chief and I talked about had to do with the beach station and one point that he made, and I expect you guys are aware of this one, is apparently we don't have um, a, a connection down there that's got the kind of bandwidth to be able to broadcast live um, no, that you wouldn't be able to do that. Well, not now. That that would be we that was <coughs> would be nice to have. We we got that done because we had access AV here. Anyways, paying for them to come down, so we said, why don't we go down to the other station and if we could have. Uh, it's just for the uh, beach precinct meetings and hopefully the HBAC and whatever else they wanted to do there. Yeah. But, but that would all be in the context of taped meetings? Taped. They would they'd be taped for now. I mean, you could eventually, I guess... At some point, there is going to be enough bandwidth. The uh, requirement will be two megasecond. Uh, so I, here shortly, I get a feeling we'll take care of that. But um, yeah, that's what we're looking at. Yeah. My, my suggestion is just we don't need a protracted discussion tonight, but we yeah. take into consideration those two factors mm -hmm. and maybe the time to make <coughs> the proposal of what we need on the beach station might be when either we've got that connection in place or, or it's on the immediate right. that, that's horizon. Not, that's not critical to do right, that right, right now. I just, while he was down there, I had yeah. it done right. and I was going to put yeah. it forth. Right. Okay, the, the final item I want to bring up is Mary Louise had made a comment at our last meeting, it must have been January 13th, about the, the possibility of, of adding um, a member to the cable committee um, who is essentially an SAU 90 representative. Um, I think that that's a, a good idea. One point, I just discussed it briefly with Brian on the way in, we're not clear if, if the individual that they have in mind is, is a Hampton resident or mm -hmm. not, yes, but I think is. that he, huh? yes, 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 he is. Yes. Okay, I was, I was just going to say, um, I would be in, in, in favor of that and I'd, mm -hmm. I'm ready to make a motion that we do that. But Can we back up a minute or <coughs> so? You had asked for conversation on this earlier part, Mr. Chairman, not to be rude. But uh, the fire station over here, mm -hmm. I thought one of the things that we were going to consider is we could, that would back up what we have here, mm -hmm. regardless if we broadcast from there or not. Like a back up right, it would be. It if would this be building funds, funds, can we yeah. work from there? Right. Yes, and everything we've been moving to would go that way. That's why I was mm -hmm. wanting to comment Good. on while well, we were there, Mr. Chairman, uh, mm -hmm. because I think that's important. So you're looking at from that point of view. Also, As even though we can't <coughs> broadcast public meetings there, we still have the backup capability mm -hmm. there. Right. What now, will that, well, let me uh, further go on here. Now, if we operate Channel 22 here, for example, and once we get running uh, further down the road, can we operate Channel 13, the other, the so-called new one for the school? Can that operate out there? Can we operate both of them here or both of them from there? Well, How will that work? Well, we're half the equipment's going to be down there. Mainly the channel 13 equipment's going to be down there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to give them full access for the scheduling. Okay. All right. <coughs> but having two nests, obviously, we got a fallback position to go right. into. Okay. Because they can both operate two channels. Right. Yeah. yeah. Good show. That was answers that question. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. So, 
let me understand uh, to Mike's point. So our ability to broadcast from there would would still be limited to either EOC or taped. Um, right taped now, sessions. we're 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 working on getting working Comcast on to run the line there. Right. That's that was what we talked. We we had uh, approved the last time I was here. Right, right. And we're just waiting for that. But but again, uh, what we could do is because it doesn't have the security or whatever right. to be able to have public access in a public meeting would be limited to either EOC right. or or um, you know Recording. meetings on yeah, media so, as yeah. opposed mm -hmm. to a, a, a live meeting yeah. or whatever. Well, yeah. maybe that. I think you might be mixing all apples and oranges. What, I, what really would be true is you could operate, you could chat, broadcast everything from there correctly if you had but to. But you can't, he's saying you can't have public. Live. But you yeah. wouldn't be you can go live. Yeah. You can yeah. uh, run the cameras over there. I agree with that. But we could broadcast this meeting or a school oh, meeting right, right. from over there, correct? Yeah, it could control. It could exactly. Control, yeah. see, see what I'm saying? So, so he's you, saying you could, you could if be running the, con I don't know why you'd want to do it, but you could run the control room from here. But the signal is actually. Uh, well, you can run the control room off the first floor. You put up some cameras, and then we back feed into the right. with, with a portable and yeah. back I, feed I, into I, it. I understand. What you're I, I don't need to understand that anymore tonight. But I think before <laughs> we hit no, my point is before we hit um, yeah. equipment purchases or whatever and proposals, there, there has to be a plan that's cognizant oh, of some of those absolutely. limitations. That's, that's all. Okay. okay, but anyway, back to the issue of of the. Um, addition of a cable committee member who is an SAU 90 representative. Any further discussion? I'm willing to make a motion Mr. to just... John Judson. It's mm -hmm. Mr. Judson. Well, I, I think we want to leave it to the schools as well, to who they would assign. The we'll technical probably assume representative, yes. But I, I, I don't think we want to pick the person. Well, he's the person that the I, superintendent I stipulated. <coughs> right, I understand. So I would make a motion yeah. that we add a... Um, Sixth. ...member to the, to, to the cable committee. Um, that being an SAU 90 representative. I'll second. Um, Fred, is there any reason that we can't do that? I assume there's no limitation in terms of... It's your committee. You have the option to do that anytime you want. Right. Okay. Any further discussion? No. All in favor? Unanimous. Who, um, somebody, who, who wants to get in touch with whomever, the, the, the IT person over there or, or whatever? I've got his phone number. I can call him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They, okay. they know. Uh, before these nice gentlemen leave, may I ask something? Sure. It's nice that we've had more people signing on for email, but I'm still seeing people with their carts, and they don't know when to put it out, and they don't know when to do this. Could we get a little memo on how to sign up for email or phone notices and have, have a bunch of them run off? And give them to the town clerk's office if they just have a little oh, stack of. They're these. on the board. They're up on the counter. You, oh, you have them on the counter. Oh, yeah. On the counter, but right in the box with a pen chained to it. Okay, <laughs> but, you, but you see what? But you see what I'm saying? People are physically going to the town clerk's window. Uh, and the I town don't clerk, know how many the town clerk doesn't want to slow down the lines when they get she busy. Think she wants so she, uh, she wants she di they direct them to then, that. Oh, clock. so they're asking them to go over there. So, so okay. is, is it we've got to sign up more oh, people. So is it a part of, for example, if you take um, automobile renewals yeah. at the end of one year, yeah. you will have hit most people right. in town. Right. Is yeah. it part of their process? I, I, I'm not in running their process, right. so but right. that's I don't what think I was there's anything that that you know if there's a stack over there that can sign up. I don't think there's anything that prevents us from asking <coughs> or requesting that the town clerk, in conjunction with yeah. with you know. Uh, you know, different transactions, yeah. spending 15 seconds just, just, just pointing, the, pointing the people or, over. Yeah, yeah, or just the, hand The, the it. other it's good location would be public works as they come in. Oh. You know? What do you mean, to the transfer station? To the, a tran or even in uh, Marie, to Marie. At the at, uh, right at the public works. Well, you don't, don't have that many office. people. Yeah. You don't have that the, many. The thing about automobile registrations is, I think you're hitting yes. 90, yes. 95 percent yes. of the people, whereas More. DPW yeah. transfer maybe yeah. it's. 25%. And we have got to increase the number of individuals getting these notices, so we do not have the situation with the carts out, right. with snow. <laughs> and the whole I think thing. we have a consensus that that's a good thing. Mary Louise, do you want um, to touch base with Jane? I'll talk to Jane. Okay. I'd be happy to, yeah. and then see if we can get a little just handout. Yep. Just Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you gentlemen. You. Okay. Minutes of January sixth. Page one.
page two. Page three, um, paragraph in the middle right above old business says DRA will dispose a breakdown. I think it meant DRA will provide a breakdown. Uh. <laughs> I'm not sure where dispose came from. Although you never know. Mm -hmm. Page four. Page four, <coughs> first um, decent sized paragraph down last line. It says connection fee of $300 for each residential and non-residential property. It's not non-residential property, it's non-residential connection. Right. Yeah. Page five. Page six. Page seven. Yes. Nick, Nick Reed is R-E-I-D, not R-E-E-D. Yes, on page seven, <laughs> right in the middle, uh, they misspelled my name, but that's not a big oh. deal. Right in the middle, it says Selectman Bean is not unsympathetic to Selectman Pierce's settlement. I before E except after P or after C. C. I know that. Right? <laughs> this is P. Okay. P. Page eight. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. I'll second that. All in favor? Hey, we got Mary Louise on board with approving the minutes. Well, oh here. my We're God. There. Oh my God. Okay, minutes of January 13th. Page one. Page two. Page three. I'll ask Fred. <laughs> it says, it says 525,000. What should the minutes say? The information that I was given was approximately 125,000. That's the way I remember. I'd it like too. it to be 500,000 <laughs> if we had it. But <laughs> okay. While we're right there, Mr. Chairman, right below there, it says Lechman Pierce commented, if have, that's a little awkward, if we have an electrician, why can't we? Okay, why can't he fix the lights? Yep. Okay, page four. Page five. Page six. <coughs> I'd like to just confirm a little bit more detail. Um, so as Mr. Welch added the following to, to his report, mm -hmm. and then he it references here a long conversations he had with Mr. Noyes in regards, and, and I believe what <coughs> Fred also said is that we will no longer be canceling trash pickup simply based on the schools correct. being that is canceled, correct. and the yeah. DPW director will make that decision independently yeah. of what goes on in the schools. That is correct. Okay. Page 7. Um, I would add to the, the first large paragraph down third line, it says state officials on expanding the project. I would, a little bit more granularity, I would say buy $60,000. That was mm -hmm. the amount that, mm -hmm. that we're expanding it. Page 8, page 9. Um, I, I will just make a comment. I did not attempt to go through and verify that all these recommended by the Board of Selectmen in the minutes here oh. are, are, are accurate, yeah. but I, I will tell you that from looking at the warrant, I thought that they were accurate. Yeah. So assuming, yeah. I'm assuming the warrant was created from... Mm -hmm. Not only did we check the tape, but three of us kept <coughs> us. Okay, so yeah. that's because, like I said, I just, I'm not saying the rise, I'm saying I didn't look like an awful lot of work for nothing. Right. Um, page 10. Yeah. Page 11. I make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Second. Seconded by Selection Pierce. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Minutes of the special meeting on January 14th. That was the minutes associated with voting recommend and not recommend petitioned war and articles that came in after 5 o'clock on Monday the 13th. Um, somebody want to make a motion to approve those? I'll make a motion to approve. And a second? Okay. Seconded by Mike Pluff. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, got through that. Town Manager's report, Fred. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, the warrant for the annual town meeting and delivery of sessions was posted in accordance with law on Friday, January 24, 2014. The warrant is also available on the town website for anybody who would like to look it up and read it. <coughs> Senate Bill 219, relative to the ability of towns to deposit with the town trustees sums paid for cemetery lots um, that can then be placed in the cemetery fund for future maintenance, was heard by the Senate Committee on Public and Municipal Affairs. 
Um, and it, it was recommended for passage with amendments by the Senate Committee of the day it was heard. How bad are the amendments? I uh, know, just very minor things. Oh, okay. There's always a few little minor okay. things that they like okay. to do. Uh, work continues on the interior of the Church Street pumping station for the completion of the electrical systems, the HVAC handling equipment, mm -hmm. and preparing for the setting of equipment for pumping operations. So they're, they're moving right along. They've been doing an awful lot of work down there, including some concrete work on the inside. Pumps, <laughs> pumps are going to be pretty heavy, right? Uh, yeah, there's a, a crane to get them inside. Yeah. So. Three tons of uh, they're something I wouldn't want to try to pick up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, man. Uh, the delivery session for the annual town meeting will take place on Saturday at 8.30 p.m. That's this Saturday. A.M. A.M., excuse me. Uh, <laughs> at, well, it may be 8.30 p.m. before we <laughs> adjourn. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> at Winnicott kind of High School. Uh, the session will set the final wording of articles and the level of appropriations to be voted on by ballot on March 11th. Please come. Right. Yes. It's important. Yes. Very important. Uh, persons who need to file for exemptions, elderly, blind, uh, veterans, uh, uh, reduction, uh, the reduction provision for the precinct taxes, uh, things of that nature, that deadline is fast approaching. Uh, we would request that you consult the assessor's office so that you get the necessary and proper paperwork mm -hmm. in order to fill it out yep. and complete it in accordance with the law. I received a very nice uh, email from Dick DeRosia uh, the other day pointing out that uh, uh, our January or December 6th to January 8th bill for utilities was based on 0 0.912 cents per kilowatt hour and the rate was 0.1152 cents per, per kilowatt hour for everybody else or wow. uh, considerably more than what we are paying and thank you Dick for all the great work and the committee for all the great work they did and in getting us to the point where we're paying a lot less than what yeah. the, the rate is. The other thing is that uh, I had a call today from uh, the town manager in Seabrook. As you know, we had asked uh, the selectmen to approve oh. doing the uh, cleaning of the oh, Sun yes. Valley Beach. Yes. And they are going to say no. Oh, really? In case no. The public works director does not wish to do that work. So they're oh. going to say no. Oh, well. interesting. We that's should receive that, that, a letter that's, shortly. That's, that's too bad because if you look at that and you look at all they've got to do, it's kind of like picture yeah. yourself like cutting your lawn, yeah. a big lawn like Mike's, and you got 20 <coughs> foot of your neighbors long, and, and yeah. just yeah. Um, we're going to pay him yeah. for it. But right. Well, thank you for following up on that. Well, it's, it's, been a, it's been a contest. It's been seven months to get the answer. But, yeah. uh, wow. they do sorry, it's not the other way. But they do things slow down there. Okay. Anybody that that covered, Fred? Yes, yeah, sir. It does. Okay. Any questions for Fred? No. I have one question, sure. um, and, and it has to do with the town report, and it, it just popped into my mind um, over the weekend. Goes back to last year. I had a couple of people comment about inaccuracies in the uh, town report. Very minor thing, uh, and, yes. and you get something that's that thick or whatever. Oh yeah. You accept it, so it wasn't like it was a big deal or whatever. <coughs> but the question is: is is there any sort of formal or even informal? process where when the town report is pretty close to done, obviously it's a Word document or mm -hmm. something like that, right. where it goes out to a few different people just to give them an opportunity to look at it just for the purpose of some, I, I don't know, yeah. think I want to call it proofreading, proofreading. But, but just nothing to do with, definitely not we should change this in this yeah. direction, oh, editorial right. comment, right. just things that are pure yeah. spelling or factual inaccuracies. Mm -hmm. We do have it read by three different people. Okay. And we try to catch them all, but unfortunately, okay. a few get through. Okay. If we're doing that, then, then I'm, 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 I'm fine with that. Okay. <coughs> Old business. Not correct. That Selectman's is. assignment of motions related to moving articles at deliberative session. And we had a brief discussion at the start where apparently um, we're, we're thinking that with the exception maybe of the budget and the um, petitioned warrant articles that the selectmen are going to be moving all of them. Is that okay. the gist of what I got earlier, Fred? That's normally what happens, but yeah. um, well, it's summer. I think last year, I could stand corrected, but I thought last year the um, planning board moved the zoning articles. 
I thought they did too, but I could be wrong. Well, if a representative is there and they choose to move, they have the we right do to that. do it. Yeah. So, so not, should we bother assigning anybody or just react on the fly? Just react on okay. the fly. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I assume that is there any need to move the elected officials, the, the first no. one? No. I don't right. think so. No. Okay. No. So, and we assume the budget committee is, is, yes. is, is going to do the budget. Do right. right. I would volunteer to move the six collective bargaining Articles nine through fourteen. Now, one lump, Richard. Um, as a group. No, I, I, I personally didn't like the way the the budget committee just approved Ooh, those separately. all at once. No. I, I think yeah. it. Okay. I whatever. think enough. There's enough money involved and and yeah. whatever that I I think what I would do is probably give a similar maybe if anything maybe shortened the to the one minute thing that I did yeah. here. Yeah. Um, or whatever on those Maybe six. Maybe the so two police, two fire, and then the other two separately. Well, they're different yeah. amounts or You'll whatever. probably find the moderator is going to want to do them separately. Well, right? we've, separate. we've done them yeah. all separately in the past. Right. Okay. Would somebody, just for simplicity, would one individual like to second all of those? I don't think we need to second it. Just oh, yeah. no, the moderator always to calls. No, no, no. I see what you're saying. Oh, I, I will. thought you meant here. I'll no, no. no. What I'm saying is just for simplicity, if I'm going to move them all, yeah. if we had one person. I will second it all. Okay, so Mike okay, Pierce yeah. is going to second. So we're all set then okay. on Articles 9 through 14. Article 15 is the Grist Mill Dam. Somebody yes, like the vault? Actually, I'd like to move both the dam and the culvert. Okay. And who is going to second those? I'll second them. Okay, both of those, right, Mike? Yeah. Okay, and Fred, you're taking them down. You got. The, I'll, yes, I'll write them down. But you're the, you're the official scorekeeper. How's that? <laughs> I don't know about the scorekeeper, but DPW replacement equipment. Well, I think Mike should I'll move, move that, that, and I'll okay. second. Okay. <coughs> Road improvement capital reserve fund. I'll move that one as well. I'll second it. Yeah. Okay. Recession of Community Revitalization Tax Relief. How about Mr. Ah, Bean? Mr. Bean. Sure, I'll do that. <laughs> Thank you. I'll second Phil, or unless somebody else wants it. Okay. No, nope. I got Bean. We'll see. Okay. Human Service Agencies. That's a boilerplate thing, but you can. Yeah, I can it. do that if you want me to. Good. Okay. And who's going to second that? I'll, I'll second it. I you going to second it, Mike? Okay. Yeah. Police forfeiture fund. I can do another boilerplate. Yeah, that's another one. Second that. Maybe. Okay, Mike P Pierce, Mike Pluff. <laughs> Recreation <laughs> infrastructure fund. No, I'll should, move it. I should be one of the three people that. that voted in favor. Okay. And who's going to second that? I'll second it. Yeah. Okay. Geez, I'm going to be busy. That's good. <laughs> Grist Mill Restoration Fund, that's the one um, associated with the 28000 That's holding the money over. All yeah. right. For the building. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Who wants to uh, move that? I voted against it, so I better not speak up on it. it you voted against Yeah, okay. I remember you did. You're right. Okay. Dr. B, you want to do yeah, that? Yeah, you're being <laughs> quiet over there. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, and who's going to second that? Woolsey. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting desperate now. You see <laughs> <laughs> We're only halfway through. <laughs> cemetery burial trust fund. Is that typically moved by a selectman as opposed to a cemetery trust fund? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a housekeeping. Right. I'll, I'll move it, Richard. You'll move it. Okay. And who's going to second I'll that? I'll second it. Yeah. Okay. Conservation Commission land acquisition fund. I wonder if if Jay Deaner is going to want to move that or. I think well, he'll probably speak to it. We can move it. He'll speak to it. It's not no okay, sense. Okay. Who wants? To yep. Okay. That's I'll fine. I'll move it. You'll move it. Yeah. And who's going to second it? I can if you want me to. Good. Pierce. Okay. Adoption of RSA 149I. Uh, I want to take that one. You want to do it? Oh, yes. And who's going to second that? I'll second it. Bluff. Okay. Gee. I won't be able to leave. Sewer connection <laughs> fee. We're going to watch them. Let me, let me flip the page here. I'm behind. Okay, go ahead. Sewer connection fee. Oh, I can do that. Let me do it. It's a cookie cutter type thing. And who's going to second that? Phil. Dean. Okay. <laughs> I presume that, that Fred is going to put out some sort of a list in the next couple of days so that yes, everybody sir. will know. Yes, sir. tomorrow. Because in theory, even if it's very brief, whoever makes the motion briefly speaks to the um, article. Or, or whatever. not. Not briefly, maybe. I'll volunteer for number 28. Okay. Here, solid waste. Oh, solid, solid waste. waste. 
Can somebody just second? Yes. Mary Louise, did I'll you say you second? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Acceptance of Great Gate Drive, Juniper Lane, and so on. <coughs> that's Those are uh, cookie cutters. Oh, well, that's right. Okay. Yeah. That why mean, don't you? Do I'll do. Th I'll do, do one. Why don't you do the three of them, Mike? Because they're all essentially the same. Okay. I'm going to put Mike down for those three. Yeah. And, and who's, who's going to second, second all of them? I'll second you. And okay. we'll see. Yeah. Second. That means I won't get to take a break in the afternoon. Oh. Martial Arts Ordinance Amendment. I think our military experts are jumping yeah. right. on that. Okay. Whatever, Mr. Welch. <laughs> <laughs> Selectman Bean, and I'll second that. Good. Okay. I will volunteer to move the entertainment ordinance. Uh, good. Oh, Mike, good. Should, Mike Pierce should yep, second. Mike okay, I can up. second that, I guess. Okay. Appointment of a tree warden. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can do that one, Richard. Move it up. Phil will second you. Richard and uh, Phil are going to do that one, are they? Okay. Definitely. What a team. Repeal of the Fire Capital Reserve Fund. I'll do that. And second. I can do that if you want me to. Good. Bowman Lane Sewer, that's a petition. Yeah. Experience Hampton, Charles Fisher House. I think they're all yeah. the rest of the petitions. All the rest of the petitions. petitions. Yeah. So who moves the private petitions? The petitioner? Petitioners. Petitioner. Errs. 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 Whatever. <laughs> what, what, would hap what would happen if nobody moved a petition. And normally what somebody would jump in and make the yeah, motion. Well, what, what, just out of them. curiosity, what would happen if nobody moved it? I don't think it done. You won't it would have still it. go to the ballot. You still got to put yeah. it on the just, ballot. Yeah. You, you won't have curious. that problem. Uh, somebody will step up. Just curious. Okay. I think we're all set on that. Trouble. Any other... Um, well, will you give us a formal list on this later, Fred? We'll, yeah, we'll I, do I, it tomorrow and, get something and out by email, email it to you because we have to have it for the moderator on Wednesday. No, 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 no. He has to memorize it. Okay. Oh. Ooh. I have to memorize. Other, um, I have to memorize. I have to get up at some ungodly hour. Any other, on um, <laughs> any other old business? <laughs> nope. Any other, I have one item. Yeah. Um, so. Did all of the selectmen complete the auditor's questionnaire? No, I didn't. I no. needed I didn't. a copy. I, I threw didn't. it out, frankly. I, I thought it was there in error. I don't know why I did that. You I can didn't. do that all by email, you know. I know. I just didn't do it. I forgot about it. When was that sent out? Sorry, oh. I forgot about that. Just throw me a copy at some point in time. But you didn't remember what day it was sent out? No, no, no. We'll, we'll get right on that. The audit should be done in November, of, so yeah. we'll make sure that there's <laughs> no, no, no I, I think, I think they need it when they're doing right. the field yeah. work. Whatever. Oh, really? Just yep. Okay. I think they you, need you that. Roughly, the morning. Yeah. Does anybody remember roughly when that was but sent? I'll, what I'll do, Mike, oh, I'm making myself a note here. I'll go back and I'll forward that email. Oh, thank you. If we can do it by email, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Forward it to Mayor Louise. If attachment, you can fill it right in. Yeah. Fill it forward to Mayor Louise. Do it by email, we get it done. Why don't you send it to everybody? Good. That's what I said I'd do. Good enough. Thank you. Good idea, Mike. Okay. Any other old business? No. New business, parking west side of Ocean Boulevard. Fred? Uh, Mr. Chairman, the board asked me to uh, make up uh, some documents with regards to the parking. We, mm -hmm. we have 10 minute parking for a lot of the yeah. west side of Ocean Boulevard. Yeah. I did check with Mr. Coinhoff and the uh, traffic division at State DOT. Yeah. As far as they're concerned, there is no parking there. Oh, okay. uh, really? <laughs> there, there is no ordinance regulating it, uh, really? they've never adopted it. Uh, basically, it's it's whoever put the signs up, put the signs up. We don't know they didn't do it. We don't wow. know if we did it, uh, but they're there. In any event, what I did is I gave you a, a rundown of yes. where the various parking areas are and, yep. and what they could constitute now, at least as best we could from the signage that's <coughs> there. Yeah. I sent it to the safety departments. Yeah. Uh, the fire chief didn't have a problem with them. Yeah. The chief of police did, and he gave you a list yes. of the areas that he thought should be revised. Okay. Um, the question is, do you want to go with that list for the revision? Uh, it's a, it is a safety matter, and he did have his people go out and actually measure and look at it. Um, the other issue is, do you want parking there at all? Well, that's what I was going to say, Fred. Why can't we just wipe the parking out and have done with it? Well, you, you, you actually can. There is no parking there now, legally. Yeah. Uh, the state, if you if you do what the state, the, the chief of police has asked you to do here, yeah. and we send that information into them, they will issue a state DOT traffic order authorizing this type of parking. Oh. And they will file that with the town clerk and the secretary of state. So, so if we went with Chief Sullivan's proposal, we then send it to the state, 
assuming they approve it, then we'd be responsible for putting the signage up that reflected what was. And we'd also respond, be responsible for enforcing the parking yeah. and ticketing. I don't. I don't. Let, we me, have let, to me, give let me ask a question. Um, Just take it out. Uh, looking at it from a, a resident's point of view, that I, I fully understand, Jamie wanting to be get away from the ten-minute thing. Yeah. You know, yeah how, right, you know, right. I fully yeah. understand that. But to to not have any parking at all, what's that do to a resident that you know? I, I, this is a question. Do, do people like kind of pull up there? They're, they're renters. They've got to unload their car and and whatever. And and would we be throwing a monkey wrench into people as that way? As far as people unloading vehicles and loading the no. material into their house or yeah. their rented facility or whatever, the yeah. police never bother them for We're that. We're talking dead parking. Um, right. Just We're talking someone who just pulls up, parks, yeah. period, locks the car up yeah. and leaves. Um, that's a difficult issue because uh, there's not a lot of areas up there to really park right. safely. Right. So yeah, what they do is they pull off the road onto the front of the lot. Oh yeah, that's wonderful. Right. Yeah. Once they're off the road, yeah. the sidewalk is not ours, so we can't <laughs> ticket them for parking <laughs> on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> and if they break up that poor state sidewalk, well, it's already broken so up. So. Let me ask a question then. At, at this point, do we, if, if we decide to get away from the 10-minute parking for the reasons that yes. the, the police yeah. chief cited? Mm -hmm. It, it appears to me that we've got two choices, either yeah. the recommendations yeah. in the police chief's yes, memo sir. or take no it, parking. Take it all out. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I have a suggestion. This has been a, a problem mm -hmm. for, for a long time. Yep. If, if this were deferred for two or three or four weeks <coughs> for the decision, no big deal. there may be pieces to this that we don't comprehend. Maybe we could ask Nick if, you know, Board of Selectmen considering you know, eliminating parking on Ocean Boulevard in North Beach or whatever in an effort to try and bring out anything. Get people's right. comments. And, and right. so I, I think yeah. given that two or three weeks can only Another yeah. thing you might consider is if people who might live along there, Don't residential want parking, they might want to park their car in front of their own no. parking. Well, again, the way, way it is now, they can only do it for 10 minutes. I know. But yeah. anyway, does that seem reasonable? Yeah. Or whether it's our yes. meeting or, right. or maybe Nick doing something, get the word out and bring it yeah. back on the With agenda. You. As long as Nick says it's only on the west side of Ocean Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if we decide, we decide which way we, regardless which way we go, we'll probably need some signage. And how long does it take to get signage before the summer rush? Uh, uh, signage, signage. That's a state road. That's a state road. If you do anything with park hearings, so yeah. yeah. you allow it or you put an ordinance in to ban it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Has to go through the state, and you have to put signs up signifying it. We do. Right. How long does it take us to get the sign? Um, signage about 30 days. So if we put this off a month, take another 30 months at least to get the signs and the state's approved. Until May. How about Not if we okay. will? We'll, we'll, we've asked Nick to do something. How about if we have a, a public hearing on this, either like February 10th or February 17th? Why? Why are we doing that? Stuff? Be it's because dangerous. I think it's potentially a big deal to the people that live there, and why are we rushing? But it's impatient? dangerous. I, I would I would concur with the chair. It's the middle of winter. There is no right. one there, and it, they are taxpayers that live there. It's kind of their issue, and um, Give it gives the chief. The mm. time to present it, and right. we've talked about people parking out in front, and it gives taxpayers an opportunity to be heard, and it does us no harm. It seems to me the state should have stepped in before this and taken care of the whole thing instead of dumping it in our lap. Uh, well, well, if we have a public hearing, and then okay. we can. I think right. we have a plan. One, Thank of, you. one of the things that you might consider is that the, the village districts also looking at parking issues down there. And they may have something that they might want to consider <coughs> along this same area because we're looking at Ocean Boulevard and we're also looking at Ashworth on part of this, right? Well, they might want to blend something because they have a real, they think they have a real parking problem in the summer with residents not being able to park in front of their property. Right. Oh. We, we only went as far as Church Street, right? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. there's uh, construction going on between there and Ashworth Avenue. Okay. Yeah. There are other 10 minute parking signs beyond Church Street. But the okay. scope of what we're talking about here is the west side of Ocean Boulevard from High Street to Church Street. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Okay, I will get that on a. If we pass yeah. something related to this, or whatever parking designation, and we're responsible for enforcement. If we say take it all out, then that's the state's problem. It's the state's problem if we if we tell them we don't want any parking right. there at all. That's their problem right. because they don't allow parking anyhow. 
if we if we issue that would the uh, uh, Hampton Police be able to issue par no parking tickets? Well, that's true. That's another issue that has not been resolved. Okay. I'll have to work through that with the with the Attorney General. Oh wow. Okay. Okay, next item on a new business. Mm -hmm. Request from Northampton to join action against the Health Trust and the PLT. We came became aware earlier this evening of a meeting between the PLT and the, the Secretary of State's um, Bureau of Security Regulations Office, and we've decided to defer a pending hearing the outcome of that meeting. So we'll move on. Any other new business? No. Okay, consent agenda. Two I'll items on the consent. Uh, Mary Louise has moved the consent uh, agenda. Selectman Pierce had seconded it. There's a couple of items on there. One is a limousine license for Robert Grande, or Grande, Seacoast Executive Transportation. I believe that's on Peniman Lane. Yes, it is. And the second is a number of uh, veterans' credits. Um, any discussion on the consent the agenda? Playhouse. All in favor? Unanimous. Any closing comments? Yes, I think it's time to adjourn, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> but adjourn, keeping Saturday morning, 8.30 a.m. Oh, about stop high reminding me. So you think it's time to adjourn, or are you making a motion to adjourn? I'm making a motion to adjourn. I'll second that motion. All in favor? At 8.45 p.m. Okay. The uh, signature sheet.